So today we're going to be checking out the M28U monitor by Gigabyte. And when I tell you I looked all over YouTube for reviews on this to see if this was actually worth it because I am currently looking for an HDMI 2.1 monitor. And if you're watching this video, that's most likely why you guys are here because yes, there will be better monitors on the market. But if you're looking for one that has an HDMI 2.1, well, this is probably gonna be the best bang for your buck. At $599, it is a pretty good price and probably the cheapest HDMI 2.1 monitor that you guys can get. I wanna say the next one up is probably gonna cost you around $699 and then you have the LG that's sitting around $899, but good luck finding those. This one actually took me a little bit to get, but today we'll have a full little overview. I have it set up and I've been playing with it for the last 48 hours. Now I'll give you a full review on it maybe in a month from now, but let's dive into it and tell you what you need to know right out of the box. So at first glance, the Gigabyte is actually a pretty sleek looking monitor. Nothing really makes it stand out, but it keeps it looking really nice compared to some of your other monitors like the LG that you see right next to this one. Now it does have that borderless trim at the top and on the sides, and then it has a thicker trim at the bottom where you can see the name Gigabyte. Now I will tell you that you will need to do some adjusting to the settings because the picture quality right out the box to me wasn't that impressive. But after playing with the settings a little bit, I actually really like the color of it and it does look pretty good. So this is a little bit of 4K 60 frames right here. And since my capture card can't capture 120 frames, I actually had that overview where I had the camera, you can see the monitor, and that was actually showing you that Call of Duty gameplay running at 120 FPS with 4K display. So I'll show you how to set up those settings if you guys don't know, and I'll show you how to verify if this is actually working for you. But right there, HDMI 2.1 100 is confirmed on this monitor. So right out of the box, you will notice that when you do open up, it is very well packaged. Now you'll have your stand at the top and you'll actually get two HDMI cords plus a display port cord. You also get three different power cords. So if you aren't in the US, well, they do have you covered with two other power cords on here. But if you are in the US, don't worry, there will be a power cord for you. So you have the monitor right there and then you can see they have the stand on the right which is actually really well made. And what was really cool about this stand, usually you get those stands that keep the monitor too low. This one actually is really nice. But if you don't like stands at all, well, it does have the four holes on the back and it will be compatible with most of those monitor mounts. I'm actually using mine with the Vivo monitor mount. And I'll put a link to it in the description. Now, right out of the box, I really recommend making some settings changes. There's a button on the back you just have to hit and then you could tab up and then it will open the settings. Now you will see that it says refresh rate of 60 and we'll show you how to change that. What you wanna do is go down to picture, tab over to HDR, and then for light enhance, you wanna adjust this to one. You wanna go down to color enhance, make sure this is at zero. Go to dark enhance, turn this on, and then local dimming, you're gonna turn that on too. Your brightness should be at 100. If not, make sure you turn that all the way to 100. And those are pretty much all the settings that you need to change. Now, if you don't use HDR, there are a couple other settings you can adjust. So if you wanna turn off HDR, you can adjust the color a little bit more, but I'll let you adjust those settings yourself. Now, if you wanna be able to track how much FPS you're getting on a game, well, you can go to Game Assist right there. You can go to Game Info, you have Game Timer, Game Counter, and then Refresh Rate right so you go to refresh rate you can turn that on and then once you back out you'll be able to see that also they have a thing where you can turn on crosshairs that you always see so if you're some if you're used to something like this in counter strike well this might be a feature you want to use now once you back all the way out well you'll have the amount of fps you're getting so right now we have 60 but we want 120 so what do we need to do so whether you're on xbox or playstation you might need to go to your settings tab and then on playstation you need to go to your save data gaming app setting and then go down to game presets and then go to performance mode. Now, once you do this, you need to close out Call of Duty and then restart it. And then you notice we have 120 frames per second. So yes, also, if you wanna verify that this right, if you hit the back button on the monitor and then you hit settings, it will show you that you're at 120 refresh rate at 4K. 
So at 599, you will be getting a one millisecond refresh time, plus that 4K and 120 Hertz. So that's actually a pretty solid price for a monitor that has HDMI 2.1. Now, I imagine in the future, once we get more HDMI 2.1 monitors, the prices should start to come down a little bit. One thing I will tell you though, is not every game on next gen actually can support it. There's only a handful, Call of Duty Cold War being one of them. So if you are in a rush to get a monitor or you're not really worried about future proofing your setup, well, I'd probably hold off. While this monitor does play pretty smooth and I have really no complaints, except for the fact that I did have to spend a little bit of time trying to find the perfect color setting. If you have time to wait, I probably would. If you're trying to use this as a content creator, I would tell you guys, you might want to hold off because there's not really any capture cards that have the HDMI 2.1 and there's not any splitters that have a one in two out with HDMI 2.1. So the sad part is when I want to play 120 frames per second on Call of Duty Cold War, I can't really record any of the gameplay. So for me, I'm probably going to be playing max 4K 60 frames per second. But what's really cool about this is we can't forget this is 144 hertz so you can use this as a pc monitor at the same time which gives you that ability to not only play playstation 5 or xbox whenever you want but also game at a higher refresh rate when you do decide to jump on a pc game so it has the best of both worlds it has the hdmi 2.1 to support your next gen consoles and it has a really solid refresh rate to support you PC gamers. And if you wonder what ports it has a plug in, it has a headset port, two HDMI 2.1, one display port, one type C, and three USB 3.0 ports at your disposal. So you should have no problems hooking up anything you need to, to this monitor. And to sum it all up, while 120 frames per second does sound really cool on next gen, there's just not enough games at the moment that support this to actually really justify spending this type of money. But if you are on the market for a new monitor and you really want to future proof yourself, well, diving into the Gigabyte, the M28U is going to be the best bang for your buck. And at $599, you get the best of both worlds. You get a PC gaming monitor at 144 hertz, plus you get a next gen proof gaming monitor with HDMI 2.1 that can support up to 120 hertz at 4K. And that's where we're gonna wrap up with this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, leave a thumbs up. But until the next one, nothing but skills is out.